So please join me in welcoming Nanor to the stage. Yeah. Yo. Hello everyone, I'm Nandor uh, Kratcher from Cisco. Uh, basically, I'm an te engineering technical leader at Cisco. Uh, whatever name it is, basically I'm a software engineer by heart. Uh, uh, I originally uh, entered Cisco from Banzai Cloud. Banzai Cloud was a cloud native, Kubernetes focused uh, startup. I don't know how many of you heard about it. And Cisco acquired it, and uh, now I am part of emerging technologies and innovation uh, uh, of Cisco. And we are trying to invent new things and uh, experiment with new technologies like Wasm. <laughs> OK, so there is a lot of buzz around Wasm and also eBPF because, you know, a lot of networking related topics uh, can be enhanced by eBPF. A lot of edge-based stuff can be enhanced by Wasm, and uh, so you know uh, eBPF and WebAssembly, whose VM reigns, uh, this title says. Uh, it depends, but Rust is the fate. As in the previous talk uh, for Wasm, uh, Rust is a, is a really good language, so the support is the best for Wasm in Rust. OK, so eBPF. I would love to see an eBPF and WASM comparison. eBPF is not a general purpose computation language. It's sophisticated query language for extracting data from network packages and from tracing events inside, kern inside the kernel. But it's not a general purpose language. And what is WASM? It's a target, a bytecode target for general purpose languages. OK, eBPF and WASM, exploring the future of service mesh. EBPF and WASM are the new kids on the block for the service mesh applications to achieve high performance. As I mentioned, both of them can be enhancing the network uh, packet flow, one of them on the network cards, one of them on network filters. If you know Envoy, a lot of uh, WASM filters are running inside Envoy to uh, enhance service mesh traffic. And and also evaluations, so there are white papers uh, around e the comparison between WebAssembly and eBPF. So basically, there is a lot of buzz around eBPF and WASM and how the, they differ, how they can work together. Let's see how they can work together on the kernel level. So since we are trying to call WASM code from eBPF, uh, we have to be on the kernel level since eBPF runs inside the kernel. OK, let's say what is eBPF closely. How many of you employed or used eBPF before? Yeah? OK. Pretty good amount. So what is eBPF? It's an efficient virtual machine inside the kernel which can JIT compile into native machine code it's an alternate to kernel modules. Kernel modules are hard to write, hard to maintain. You have to keep compatibility between different kernel versions. Uh, you have to do a lot of ceremony, mumbo jumbo, to set up a kernel module, shut down a kernel module. You have to prepare for ex extreme amount of concurrent settings, like I, am I in an interrupt context? Am I in a normal context? Can I do? This locking right now, or if I lock something, then the whole system will freeze. Yeah, so it's hard to write kernel modules. So eBPF is an alternative method, since it supports low-level uh, low tracing insertion points. So you can write a small C snippet, insert it to a different uh, uh, to a system tracing event, for example, a file open event, a file close event, a file write event, a network, so everything that is a file, even a socket is a file. So it is also capable to do network packet uh, manually. So you can parse network packets, redirect network packets, drop network packets easily with eBPF and with XDP, which is a special part of eBPF. Okay. It communicates through maps, so eBPF programs can communicate with each other through eBPF maps, and also between the user space and the kernel space. 
So it's a safe extension mechanism since it runs inside the VM. It's very safe to uh, write your code. There is a really small chance that you will crash your virtual machine, your uh, edge device, or whatever, since uh, all the instructions that you are executing are verified by the eBPF verifier beforehand inserting the eBPF code into the kernel. How the eBPF uh, workflow looks like. So the whole eBPF stuff is down inside the kernel level. You can uh, attach eBPF programs to sockets and network devices. And here are the maps also down on the kernel level. And if some process in the user space are doing system calls like send message, receive messages, as I mentioned previously, uh, you can subscribe to those events and uh, do some tracing, check what is going down, uh, and do decisions based on those. And also, user space com uh, applications can communicate with eBPF programs through those maps. You can store data inside the maps. Uh, uh, you can basically attach each and every CPU a map to it so you don't have concurrency issues. OK, and what is WebAssembly? How many of you have uh, re compiled something uh, to WebAssembly? Yeah, a uh, <laughs> very large amount of people. OK, so this, one, this is a WebAssembly heavy <laughs> audience. Uh, so what is WebAssembly? It's an open start non bytecode specification. It's very, very close to eBPF from this first sentence. It's a portable binary format. eBPF is also portable uh, with the Cori specification. Compy once runs everywhere, but uh, WebAssembly has pretty huge advantages compared to eBPF from the portability uh, point of view. Supported by a huge amount of languages. So basically, not Wasm that supports languages, but languages are supporting Wasm. So if they have a compiler to compile to Wasm, they can target Wasm VMs. There are a lot of efficient user space VMs out there uh, with different kind of execution mechanisms. So there are interpreters. Interpreters are slower, but they have their advantages. They are more portable than uh, JIT compiling VMs, since you don't have to uh, move around a lot of JITing code with low level assembly and stuff like that. You write your interpreter in C or in Rust, and there you have it in every kind of uh, target architecture and platform. There is a ahead of the time compilation, so you can comp uh, compile your VASM modules into binary beforehand, before running the actual applications, and then executing it on the, with the help of the VM or the runtime. And also there is JIT. When you load the VASM bytecode into the VM and just in time compile it, when you run it, the methods that you need. All this is handled by the runtime, which is sandboxed, so you have all the safety features of a classic virtual machine memory safety, isolation, stuff like that. And also, there are different kind of uh, mechanisms out there for this. Wasm in the kernel. OK, so let's move down to the kernel level. But uh, this is not something that we have invented or I have invented. There is some already existing uh, <laughs> literature in this topic. So Ryan Hunter invented Wasm JIT. It was a low-level virtual machine that could already JIT. So JIT bytecode on the in the kernel user in the in the kernel space. Uh, this repo doesn't really exist anymore, but I'm giving Ryan Hunter the credit because uh, he deleted this repo. But there are a lot of forks out there on GitHub, so if you Google it, you will find it. Okay, Wasmer IO kernel Wasm. It's also another uh, virtual machine down in the kernel by Wasm Wasmer. And also, there is a different uh, uh, project, which is really, really uh, not a virtual machine done in the kernel, but it's a virtual machine in the user space. So it is helping, was a, you know my BPF, was in BPF, this is the project name. So it is, is, it is a framework for doing BPF 
with the help of Wasm code. So you will write your eBPF applications with an in, uh, and insert it in, uh, with, with the Unomia CLI, and the user space part of the eBPF applications will, can be written in any kind of languages since the user space part will be compiled to Wasm. Okay, so our project is called the Wasm kernel module. So it's somewhere between a kernel module and eBPF. So as I mentioned, kernel modules are hard to write and maintain, and you have to do a lot of ceremony. eBPF can be inserted into different kinds of tracing points and network packet extraction points, but it's not the general purpose. So what could we do? Let's do something that is more easier to write, since we have a virtual machine down in the kernel, so you can put Wasm into it, and it has more of kind of a feeling of a general purpose language, since eBPF is not a general purpose language, but if you expose some methods as a host method to this VM that we just moved down to the kernel, you can do general purpose things inside the VM in, in our Wasmon VM. So it's something like a sandbox kernel modules, since the VM has the features of uh, a general virtual machine. We are sandbox, as I mentioned, we have memory safety, isolation, and stuff like that. So we can piggyback the container like it's isolation of Wasm. Uh, it allows us to reuse the user space code that we have in user space, the, the, the logic basically. So you can move down kernel, uh, user space logic into the kernel space with the help of the Wasm. Uh, the whole project is extremely experimental, so please don't employ it in your <laughs> production virtual machines. And it only targets WASM32 unknown unknown, so there is no WASI support inside on, uh, or in, in our project in the kernel level since it's, since WASI, what is WASI? It's basically a standard for exposing file opens, socket writes, and stuff like that. So since uh, this is not that straightforward on the kernel level. We are not supporting WASM. How it works? How you can call WASM from eBPF code? So on the kernel level, we have the eBPF VM, which is ready to accept eBPF applications. Uh, and we have the kernel module, which has a WASM VM inside it. And we expose uh, a host, uh, sorry, we expose a module method as a kfunk, kfunk is a feature of the kernel, uh, which is something like exposing a function to eBPF. So kfunks can be exposed to eBPF, and, the, and if your function is marked as a kfunk, and you have to do, do some C magic there, then it can be found and called by an eBPF module. Okay, how is coming OPA into the picture? OPA is a, a standard policy language. Uh, it's, it's written in Rego. Uh, it, it, it has a, there was a previous talk here uh, in one of the sessions about OPA. They are trying to target the full, text, full stack for policy evaluation. So it's basically a really nice uh, security and authority uh, language and framework that you can employ everywhere in your software stack. What can you do with OPA in the kernel? Let's move it down. Uh, we, OPA can be compiled, sorry, OPA can be compiled to Wasm since they have a nice CLI called OPA and they support the Wasm build target. So it's possible to compile an OPA policy to WebAssembly. What we will do with this? Uh, let's move down some decision making into the kernel. It's really in the POC level, so don't expect any <laughs> product uh, or real world application here. And th this will be your real world user space application running inside the kernel. So what we will do, we will write some eBPF. Uh, here we are exposing our OPA evaluation uh, through a kfunk. This is a kfunk, basically. And the kfunk will call back to the virtual machine inside the kernel module, which basically runs our OPA policy, which got compiled into WebAssembly. Here, here is how it goes. So I will 
move an XDP program into my eBPF VM. I'm in, I will insert my Wasm kernel module into this Linux instance that I'm running on my laptop. I will move the OPA policy that I created and load it into this virtual machine. The virtual machine automatically exposes this uh, module, this evaluation module to, as a KFUNC, so eBPF can call it. And what we will do, uh, sorry. Sorry, there, there is missed some. Okay, so I, I will show you the demo first. So what we will do, we will do uh, XDP network packet counting. If the packets are matching a certain policy uh, that is written in Rego. Okay. Here is my small Rego policy. Can you see it or should I make it bigger? Yeah, it's much better now. It's a really small Rego policy. Uh, what I am doing, I, I have a set of allowed protocols called uh, EPV4 and EPV6. And if the input proto matches one of these protocols, I'm letting uh, this packet to be counted. Here is my kernel module that is running the, virtu uh, the virtual machine. And as you, as you can see, I have an OPA evaluation k funk here. And this is basically the function that will be called by a small XDP application, which is counting the network packets here. So it's extern, so it's trying to refer to a, a k funk and eval this protocol, parse the packet, create a small input for uh, OPA, and if the OPA evaluation goes to uh, true, then we will look up the counters in the map and increase the counters. Okay, I'm using Lima. Lima is a really good virtual machine uh, CLI for macOS, and I'm having an uh, ARM machine, so I had a lot of problems with VirtualBox. I, uh, VirtualBox, I can really advise you to use Lima. With Lima, I'm already uh, entering a Linux machine. OK, I'm building my kernel module quickly. Ah, it was compiled already. You don't have to wait. I'm inserting this kernel module. It has already my Wasm virtual machine inside it. Let's see how it goes. OK. I have four uh, CPUs in this virtual machine. And since I don't want to mess with concurrency, I'm creating a virtual machine for each and every CPU inside this uh, virtual machine. I mean, inside this Linux instance, sorry. There are too many virtual machines inside this story. So I'm the Linux virtual machine. <laughs> OK, so that's it. OK, what should I do now? Let's build uh, my OPA policy. OK, the small Rego instance with the protocols previously, have you seen? I just compiled it uh, to policy.wasm with the OPA CLI tool. I have some quick make targets to make this happen much more easier. OK, load this uh, OPA policy into the virtual machine. Let's check the logs again. OK, my Wasm module is dumping all the function and globals that is, that is in the loaded module. So I have a lot of OPA built-in functions, evaluation stuff, and stuff like that. So my OPA module is already inside the kernel, inside the Wasm virtual machine, and it's ready to serve eBPF. Now let's call the eBPF uh, insertion. Let's build my eBPF program. Ooh, sorry. I have an issue there that I can fix. Are ah, much better. OK. Uh, now my application is already compiled. It's trying to call the famous OPA evaluation method that is already waiting inside the virtual machine. Now let's load the eBPF application. And it will try to count network packets. Everything is fine. Yeah. OK, let's see the logs. Ooh, I have a lot of logs there. Since protocol, EPV4 protocol is already 
floating around my machine. It's communicating with the Wi-Fi. A lot of services are already running inside the, the virtual machine. So as you can see, the evaluation protocol, uh, the BPF OPA EVA method uh, is running one million times. And with the input protocol, this is the ID of the EPV4 protocol. And the result was one. OK, let's check the eBPF logs. Uh, it's running there. So it's classic eBPF log. As you can see, hello, so BP, hello, very large amount of package. OK, you are allowed by OPA to enter. So OPA allowed these EPV4 packets to enter and get counted. And that's all. How, it, how is it working? So we are running the Wasm3 virtual machine. It's a fast WebAssembly interpreter. It's inside the kernel module. It's an extremely portable uh, virtual machine for Wasm. As I mentioned, interpreters are very easy to move, move around. You don't have to mess with a lot of assembly and JIT compiler magic. We modified it to be able to run it in the kernel. Since it, 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 it is a user space virtual machine, and it's capable to run on the edge and stuff like that, but uh, not on the kernel space. So we have to modify it. We maintain a fork. It's well written, easy to extend. It's written in C. Uh, it's really easy to use. Uh, it's also employed in uh, crypto cryptocurrency related uh, uh, works. Has was its support, but we don't need it. As I mentioned, we are just targeting Wasm32 unknown unknown. What do we want to do in the near future? Employ a JIT capable Wasm, Wasm VM. Since per, from performance perspective, interpreters are not that good. Wasm3 is a really one of the fastest interpreters out there for Wasm, but it's not the fastest. So probably we need to extend it to have a JIT inside it, or employ another runtime which has JIT already built in. Dynamically exposed Wasm methods. So as you see, uh, my OPA evaluation method was written, hard-coded there in the C code. So we need to find out a, some kind of framework to be able to expose methods uh, as Wasm, Wasm methods as k-funks. A lot of security and performance considerations. So this stuff needs a real review from a real kernel developer, which I am not. <laughs> and probably a ton of more future uh, enhancements. The whole stuff is open source under Cisco Open Wasm kernel module. Check it out. You will find the, Wasm, the modified Wasm3 there as a submodule. We have a CLI also, which loads the kernel models from user space into kernel space. And you can write any kind of issues, questions there. We are happy to. Uh, receive those. So, any questions? Well, hello. Well, first, let's give them a round of applause for this talk. <laughs> but I certainly think uh, it's incredibly interesting, especially uh, just thinking how there's always a lower level to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even pushing this all the way down into the kernel. But yeah, are there any questions from anyone? Uh, on anything that was discussed here. I certainly have a question, uh, which is, what's the easiest way for someone to get involved in the project? Uh, what's the easiest way to get in and contribute? Uh, as, as I mentioned, we have the GitHub repo. It was open source uh, at least three days ago. <laughs> so it's quite fresh. Uh, so jump on it, compile it. Uh, a lot of instructions are in the readme. Use Lima, as I mentioned, if you have a Mac or otherwise as well. So, and we all have a, also have a Slack instance called uh, ETNI uh, Cisco. And we will create a Wasm related channel there. It will be part of the readme, so I will put it into there. Gotcha. And actually, I have an, another question, just sure. as a runtime nerd. 
Uh, so you mentioned that you wanted to go towards Whammer uh, potentially as a potential runtime, um, but you mentioned um, like some JIT stuff being uh, particularly difficult when you're running in the kernel. Um, with Whammer, was the plan to use something like their ahead of time compiler so that way it's just kind of a done show or, or, or why was the reason you were looking at Whammer? Yeah, uh, I think the ahead of time stuff would be much, much better since uh, it's really hard to create executable code in inside the kernel and mark it as a executable memory space. So I think this is, has some kind of security limitations already. And memory is also written in C, so it can be easily moved down to the, to the kernel level. And well written has a nice uh, quality of code, I think, so I really like memory. Makes a lot of sense. Any last minute questions from anyone? All right, give it up again for Nandor. Yeah, thank you very much.